Hey everyone, and welcome to Television from the Multiverse, the DC TV podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter, and that is Connor, and we well, we talk about DC TV shows every week. It's the off season. It's also it's also Christmas Eve at the time of recording. May I add? So, yeah. you know, uh, we are, but regardless, we're here because why not? We're professionals. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. What else? We're professionals until we're not. I think that's the the clear exactly. Point. Yeah. So what are we doing in the off season? Because obviously, normally we talk about Supergirl, we talk about Flash, we talk about Green Green Arrow. So just Arrow. Sorry, I, I was letting my my actual knowledge of the comic book character and the fact that he's called Green. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not sure that thing constitutes as the comic book character. Yeah, and then Legends of uh, Tomorrow. That's the ones we usually cover on the show. But it's the off season, and what we're doing in the time off is we are doing episodes of Lois and Clark, the new Avengers of Superman. We're doing episodes of Smallville, and we're doing two episodes of the animated series Young Justice, which for me is a first time watch, so that's quite exciting for me. Uh, the others are, are revisits for both of us, and... Um, that's what we're going to do. So that's 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 that's, that's, that's the thing. That's the plan. That's the plan. So uh, it's a shame we weren't like halfway through the seasons because if we get to like, episode nine or ten, I'm sure they're both Christmas episodes. <laughs> probably. So yeah. so we'll we'll probably end up doing them sometime in the summer because obviously we'll do these for a few weeks and then we'll have the actual shows back, and then we'll get back to Lewis and Clark and Smallville in the summer, and by then you know obviously it'll be it'll be it'll be warm and it won't fit the mood anymore. But hey ho. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, there's not no news this week to speak of. At least I don't think there was. I didn't see anything. I'm at, I'm at a disadvantage this week because we didn't do the regular TV news, so I didn't look through everything. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm racking my brains to see if I can think of anything, but it's, it's n- n- nothing spring into mind. That said, I did see some episode titles for the uh, the first like four or five Flash episodes back, and one in particular caught my eye. Oh, is it incredibly spoilery to say? I don't think so. I mean, it kind of gives you a bit of the plot of the episode's going to be, but it's not like a classic Flash story or anything like that. It's just, it's, uh, okay. so, that, that, that's oddly excites me, by the way. I think this may be a super fun episode, right? I don't know, I can't remember what number it is, but one of the, I think it's the third or fourth one back is called Honey, We Shrunk Team Flash. <laughs> that sounds like what I expect to be a Legends episode. Yeah, I feel like Ray Palmer's tech has to be involved, right? Like that's why that, this happens. God, I hope so. I mean, he. And like, I hope they call it a shrink ray. Everyone's calling it a shrink ray. It's just him. He's not happy about He's it. He's not about, exactly. But they need to do it as well. Get get in on the joke. Yeah. Um. So I feel like we may get a cameo from him in some way, or at the very least, it'll be his tech that's the the culprit. Yes. Uh, but hey, uh, so I, I thought that was quite amusing. I'm, I'm looking forward to that now. But hey, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about uh, probably these shows. We got we got these these shows to work through. Uh, so we'll start. We'll do the same order as last week. We'll start off with Lois and Clark, uh, season one, episode two. It's called Strange Visitor from Another Planet. Uh, so spoilers for the episodes as we talk about them, of course. So uh, I think what's interesting about this episode for me is that it actually, you know, despite the fact that it's a 90s show and it's obviously very, very, very not procedural, but it's very standalone plots a lot yeah. of the time. Uh, but it, it does have serialised elements, and I do actually think, I want to give them credit, that the first episode after the pilot is someone, because Superman's a new thing, Superman's a new entity in this world. Looking for who he is. Yeah, looking for who he is, being suspicious of him. It's basically this, this ex-government nut job. Uh, or at least his ex-government at the end of the episode because they're not condoning his actions but uh, he he's like hunting Superman he wants to kill him, he's like nah, what's his mission he's here to do something, he's a recon op you know, the, 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 the yeah. invading forces are coming later, he's he's very much all that uh, you know, and it, it, it further kind of explores a couple of the ideas of Superman and the idea that he's here, because we, we end this finally with the interview with Lois and Superman where she finally gets to ask him a few questions all, all the classic questions yeah, all the classic. Although he neglected to mention that Krypton blew up, that I, I didn't notice that. That was the the gaping omission for me is that his planet's dead. D- does he know? Yeah, um, I actually might not know yet. Actually, because he only be- discovers Krypton in this episode, so I'm not sure he knows about that yet. Ah, you're right. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I remember the circle thing, the, the mega heat yeah, yeah. The it, it, I, mean, I don't actually know if that's what it is in this show, but it looks like the mega. It you know, does, yeah. The, the hedron thing. Uh, but I, I think yeah, I think he gets like the you know the, the usual Jor-El nonsense from that like, later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can't remember how he gets that back, but I mean, we'll discover that as we go. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a long time since we've watched this. It's been it's actually not as been as long for me. I watched it like five years ago, but it's still it's enough time. Oh, well, it's been at least a decade for me. Uh, so I I cannot wait until we get to the later seasons. See when we get to the HGL stuff, oh, we're in for a treat. Uh, but <laughs> so the main plot is that these these guys burst out of the Daily Planet and make them take lie detector tests. Uh, which is which is good fun for Clark because obviously they, they's like oh here's the two test questions are you Clark Kent uh, yes are you Superman yes and then you get the mild manner joke yeah. which you know one of the big things we were comparing last week between this and Smallville is how this handles the little cheeky references to Superman things and how Smallville handles the cheeky references to Superman things oh we could do that again this week yeah and I feel like again. This mild mannered comment here, where you know, because it, it it doesn't move from when he says Superman, and he looks at the guy doing the test. He's like, "What's going on? Why, why is it not responding to that?" And I'm like, "Did you think that he maybe he's Superman, guys?" Maybe for a second, no. Uh, but he's like, "No, either this guy is like the most mild mannered reporter of all time, or he's not got a pulse." And I'm like, "That was a neat way to get that phrase in there." I'll, it was. It yeah, was nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. M- much less clunky than than the this week's Smallville awkward reference. I think there was, more, there was more than one in Smallville. Uh, uh, probably, but one sticks out more than Yeah, well, well, one really sticks out, but there was definitely a few uh, on-the-nose things in that episode of Smallville, but more than that in a bit. We'll, we'll, we'll get there soon. Uh, so, and I like, I like Lois, actually, one of my favourite little comedy moments of this episode is when they're talking to Lois, and they're like, oh, did, did they talk to you about his plan? It's like, we didn't speak, we just flew. We didn't have to speak. And the guy's like, Telepathic abilities. Does he have telepathic abilities? It's just and he's, a... he's fixated on that for yeah. the whole episode. And then she just kind of smirks and says, "I hope not." <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, oh, Lois." Mm. Uh, so no, it's a funny little moments. Uh, I like that. Uh, by the way, actually, Joe made me laugh in this episode, and it's not funny on its own, but it's funny in hindsight. Go on. In retrospect, because of Supergirl, when Jimmy Jimmy wants to ask out. Lois's sister Lucy, which is funny because in Supergirl they, they actually did, right? Yeah. Uh, which I, I don't think it's unique to the shows either. I'm, I'm sure there's been comics in the past where Jimmy's dated Lucy. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's been 80 years of comics, you know, so <laughs> I assume it's happened. But what I what I loved here is like he's, he's trying to ask her, right? he comes in and he, she's, she's like doing her jumping jacks or whatever, she's exercising. She's got, she's got one yeah, of those. It's like a dance workout. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think she has, but I can almost, I'd almost expect to see one of those 90s exercise tapes. So 90s, aren't they? Yeah. But she, he's asking ask her out and he's, he's, he's like, oh yeah, I'm Jimmy. He's like, Jimmy, oh, I'd remember a guy named Jimmy. And he said, I've been thinking of switching to, to, to James. And I just yeah. started laughing when he said I that. Did too. I was like, oh, that's really funny now because of Supergirl because he goes by James all the time. It really feels like they were going, yeah, when they were made the show, it's like, should, should we make it James? Would that be more appropriate? And, and, and they were like, and, and like well, obviously they decided on Jimmy, but... Jimmy's not a weird name, though. People are called it's Jimmy. Not, it's not, but they, they, they clearly go, should, should we do a James? Does that sound more mature? And, and then they decided, nah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a joke in this scene because he wants to sound mature to her. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's all it is, but it just made me laugh because obviously in Supergirl, like I feel like Supergirl does a lot of things better in a lot of ways, but I think calling him James and not wanting to call him Jimmy is one of the weird little decisions they made that are just kind of annoying. It's like, just call him Jimmy. Like, don't. Yeah. yeah. Especially now when you've got some characters, he's a, 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 like, you're allowed to call him Jimmy and it's just getting murky. Yeah. yeah whenever Clark shows up and he calls him Jimmy, he's like, no, he gets to, he's Superman, he gets to call him Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. Uh, so that, that, that cracked me up just because it's a it's, it's a thing that on its own is not that funny, but now it is. It is, yeah. But uh, so yeah, so we've we've got the Lois and Clark. Uh, they realise this guy's warrant was fake, so they they start looking into him and uh, they they find this like warehouse, their, their secret Area Fifty One esque warehouse, where they find Clark's ship or Clark finds it anyway, and he sees it. And that's where we all his Krypton from. Uh, well, this comes after the flashback because he goes to speak to his parents because he's wanting to know everything about how they found him and they talk about the ship and uh, Jonathan buried the ship and he goes to look for it and it's not there. You get the classic spin down the ground. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great moment. You do. Always is. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's fun stuff. Like, I, I think... Um, I mean, I was missing Lex a little bit in this episode compared to last one because Lex is yeah. so good. But... I, uh, I I I think this 
this plot works well for the, for early Superman, where he's just shown up, and you've got this you know crazy government guy who's so paranoid and so like suspicious of him. It, it's the sort of thing that can only work at the start of the show. Like you yeah. can only get away with this now, so it might as well do it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it thematically works quite well for the episode because you've got him questioning what his intentions are and what he's here to do and all this kind of thing. And then at the end of the episode, you have him talk to Lois, and you know she's like, "Okay, I need a quote." And he, he says he's just here to help or whatever, and she's like, I need more of a thing. Like, you know, yeah, it's got, it's got to be better than that. Come on. Yeah, like this or that, or you know, something about truth and justice. And he's like, that sounds good. Yeah, you can use he's that. Like, yeah, sure, truth, justice. Truth okay, and justice. Why, why not? You know, and what do I call you? He's like, well, Superman's take it, seems to be taken off. <laughs> People seem to like that, so... Yeah, uh, that'll we'll do too, that. yeah. Uh, which reminds me. So the outfit's changed a little bit. It has. I don't, I don't know why I hate it so much, but I hate this cape being on the shoulders like that. I really don't hate it. I think... It bugs me. It bothers me more in Supergirl's version, where it's really clunky. Like, it, it feels really thick at the top. You know, it's got, like, got, like these big mm. clips. This this still flows for me. It, it's not as nice, don't get me wrong, but it, it doesn't bother me that much. And what's funny is I know it, it swaps around. Like, sometimes it will be the tucky under yeah. the, the one... That, that one's definitely better. Don't yeah. I'm not disputing that. It is just better. But it, yeah. this one's fine. It doesn't bother me. It just it feels too much like shoulder pads. It just feels weird to me. People yeah. people like complain that he's got his underwear on the outside. No, his, his shoulder pads on the outside here bothers me way more than that. <laughs> yeah. Mm, it just doesn't affect me that much. It's, it's fine. I miss the red trunks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'd take them back in a heartbeat. Wouldn't we all? Hell, even Batman's black trunks, I'd take them back in a heartbeat as well. But I, I miss it less than him, though. I feel like for him it still kind of works without them. Yeah, but it's just black and grey. It's, it's all yeah. the same, basically. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so we have, have this big thing where uh, they're taken up to, in, a, in a, a plane and the guy's plan is, oh, well, Superman cares about you guys. Oh, he'll swoop in and save you. you, know, you know. And he, in fact, he even thinks, oh, you'll send a message out to him. You'll know how to contact him. Yeah, he's, he's still on the telepathic thing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Clark, Clark actually, like, and we, obviously they have the, the kiss, which I'll admit, a little bit of force in episode two to give, have a reason for them to kiss like this. It is, it is. Right, we, I was we, glad... If, you know that it's just a, a ruse. Oh yeah, Lois has just got a plan. Yeah, yeah. She wants to whisper in his ear, right? You take the one. And Joe, you know I love, I love that it's her plan, and she immediately just gets like beat. Like the guys yeah. just grab her right away. Obviously, Clark's doing okay because he's Superman, but he gets shot, and then Lois gets thrown out the plane, and he goes out, and they get all the catching. Uh, and I, I really like that shot of Jimmy when he's looking up uh, into the sky at the bottom. Mm. It's from the opening titles, which we got obviously this week. We got the full opening titles. We did, yeah. Uh, this is nice. This is a good nineties. I actually, I, I do kind of miss uh, opening titles where you get like all their faces and the credits coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Say what you want about Smallville, but that still has that as well. It does. It's not as nice with the music. Yeah, the music's a bit more two thousands and cheesy. It for, is. For I liking. don't hate it, but. That's uh, nice. I'll be talking about the music in Smallville. Don't you worry. That's, that's, oh, that's, oh, I've got some comments of my own. That's a plan. Discussion oh, point. Yes, yes, yes. Don't it worry. Is. Uh, <laughs> but no. So I, I think what I like about this is, is a second episode of a Superman show. I like that it, it's not, it's not definitively kind of setting them up quite yet. There's, there's a few other episodes coming up soon that I think of as being really nailing. Okay, this is him really saying this is who I am. This is what Superman is. Yeah. But I feel like this one's a natural step in that direction. That that sort of makes him decide, no, this is what I am. Like, I'm not who this guy thinks I am. I am this. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, important character moments and, you know, lore moments as well for, for this show because it has to establish its own versions of everything. Yeah, it's establishing Krypton. It's establishing the, the ship. Um, P- Perry making constant references to Elvis is another thing that's establishing as well. Yeah. Uh, even when he's giving Clark some dating advice because everyone thinks him and Kat had a thing. We'll talk about that scene, but... Uh, he uses this woman that Elvis almost married uh, as a yes. story to, to teach him a lesson. Uh, but yeah, so it's, like, it's when they're meant to be in hiding because they still think this guy was legit. They're like, oh, don't go anywhere where you can be served papers. <laughs> like, hide somewhere. So yeah. Kat kind of scoops him up and takes him to hers. And, Reasonable uh, plan, to be fair. It's an okay plan. Again, it's I funny. Think that's why he goes along with it, though. It's like, well, I mean, I guess that does technically work. 
And it's funny again thinking about uh, Supergirl and how like Cat even in that show still like got the hots for him. Like because because yeah. because Cat and Supergirl is a completely different thing. Cat and Supergirl is like a mature Cat who's achieved a lot, who's a lot more level headed. Uh, you know, because the, the one in this show is a lot more just she's this flirty gossip. And- yeah, I, I do think it's funny how a lot of these Supergirl versions play like slightly older versions of these. Like yeah, a little bit yeah. Like you know, like not necessary, but you know, okay, I can see this cat. You know, when she you know get you know gets out of this stage, you know, kind of moves on and gets bigger and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Jimmy actually changes actor in the show after season one, anyway. Yeah, so why not do it again? Yeah, why not do it again? Yeah, I mean, admittedly, he's changed his race and he's about two foot taller, but whatever. I don't care. Okay. And then I, you know, I think the Superman is very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Although I, w- I would debate as a better actor than, than Supergirl playing him. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not necessarily going to dispute that. <laughs> Although oddly, I think despite the fact that she clearly has much less screen time, I like the Lucy Lane in this more than I do. Oh yeah, Supergirl yeah, definitely. Yeah, the the, the one in Supergirl is kind of like ah, oh, she's just the you know the the bland pretty actress who they hired because it's really annoying by, by by being boring. She belongs in Smallville. I'm not sure I can argue that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so the same with Kat's fun. I, I, I like Kat like, actually being strategic about so just you know when she goes to the closet and she's like, all right, he's a farm boy, he just moved to the city. What does he want? No, he doesn't want the, the, the BDSM outfit, he doesn't want this outfit, he doesn't want that outfit. Ah, he wants just a comfortable girl next door feel. So it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's just the jeans and the and the jumper, or sorry, the, uh, the, the sweatshirt for, uh, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't understand the, the word jumper in that context. So we, we have to be transatlantic. Yes, and yeah, so, so I, I thought it was a solid episode. I didn't, think, I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one, but no. I, I think that, again, the, the, maybe the best things about it is uh, all the Lois, Lois being happy to see Clark alive at the end, and she's so happy. Like she walks in the, the Daily Planet, and she's like, you know, the the, the jacket's just sort she's of over completely the out of it. Yeah, yeah, and then she sees Clark, and she's so happy, and Clark's so happy she sees him, and, so, and if you're alive, that means Superman's alive, and he's just left standing there. Like she was excited about him for like ten seconds, and then and it's like, yeah, yeah, I guess he is alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I I enjoy the episode. Uh, I, I I had fun. Uh, so uh, that's 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 Lawson Clark. That's Lewis and Clark. So that'll, is. that'll take us on to Smallville. Things we did not enjoy. It. <laughs> Season 1, Episode 2. It's called Metamorphosis. And Joe, you know it's funny because I'd seen these obviously when they were airing, give or take. Yeah. There, there's odd little moments of recognition where I remember something. And oddly, it's after the opening titles, the song that plays is it cuts to this fair, this farmer's market. Like I just yeah. I, I knew it as soon as I heard it. I was like, oh yeah, I always remember the song playing at this bit somehow. Yeah, Weezer. Is it Weezer? There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not uh, as, like, I'm not as familiar with Weezer. I do want to point out though, there's a lot of source music in this. There and, is. And I really want to point out that we have a villain uh, who's bug based. He he's shit sp- shit evil Spider Man. Shit evil Spider Man. And of course, Papa Roach start playing. I I had such a shit eating grin on my face as well. I was like, I've not heard this song in about a decade. You know what the thing is? I don't even hate Papa Roach. Like I I was at the I, I was at the right age to enjoy some of their songs when they were a thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure they're still probably making music, but I mean when they were you know new and fresh and people yeah, knew who they were. Uh, I, I'm sure you know 15 year olds today don't, don't know who Papa Roach. Yeah, are. yeah. Why, why would they give a shit? But yeah, so this song starts playing. Like, okay, it's about and then later on, he's got a poster in his room. There's a Papa Roach poster. He's this big cockroach. Yeah. Like, okay, we're really going with this. So the opening, you know, the the, the pre credit section of this episode is we, we actually pick up. Well, actually, do before we even get to the scenes in this episode, did you think the previously on was really slow paced? Yes, and I think this is something I forgot was it used to be a thing. Network TV always used to do this with episode twos, in my experience, mm. where they'd be like, hey, in case you missed the pilot where we set up everything, here's everything you needed to know. And it, it kind of, if, if my memory goes, it, it may, most shows kind of picked up as they went on. It may just be that, but I don't know. I felt that just because I feel like you could have conveyed the same information just at a quicker pace. 
Whereas here it felt like, no, there was entire like, moments and scenes lingering in these previously on clips. I was like, that's just weird. Like, what? It is. It is. I think, it, I think it's just an episode two thing, though. I, I mean, well, maybe, we'll, maybe find we'll find out next week. week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll find out in episode three. From, from memory. But, yeah, so, so it, it, it sort of pl- plays off right where we left, where, where Clark's just sort of looking over at Lana and he goes up to the sky. It comes back. Uh, we get. We get uh, so someone else is watching her and left some butterflies in her room. And then we get the creepy bug boy. Uh, he's got warts all over his face, he's got the, the long streak of hair, he's like, and here's my first problem with this episode, is A, he's a terrible actor, the character is awful, immediately yeah, yeah. he is this cliche who does not feel believable at all, he goes home to his mother, and obviously he's too old for a start, but forgetting that, because that's just a common complaint in, in Yeah, yeah, show. I think that's just something we can just go, okay, that's consistently going to be the case, let's yeah. not mention it every time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, he like the way he argues with it, he's like oh man the, the bugs who's going to look after my bugs if you send me to military school and he's doing this voice and it sounds awful it's like this caricature of what a teenager is supposed to sound like yes exactly it is awful it is like face palming awful and of course it's, in fact, it's actually the end of the scene when he mentions the bugs where he yells out who's going to look after my bugs and it, you know right at the end of the scene and I'm like I don't, this is just so bad. I know. Like, and then he goes in the car and his Papa Roach playing and he crashes. Well, the, my, my question, Papa Roach, obviously it works for that type of character. That's the sort of, you know, stereotype. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you think they chose it just because it was Roach and that's Buggy? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I, so too. I thoroughly believe they did, yes. I, I actually, I mean, to be fair, it's the sort of thing where in another show, I'd go, yeah, they chose this because it's, you know, the, the you know, this sort of character's music. That, that that is very stereotypical of the time. But don't get me wrong. I feel like it would have probably shown up at some point anyway. But I feel like they specifically picked it here because it was the bug bug theme. <laughs> yes, villain. yes, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I've got I've got some some, some base complaints as well. But uh, right, other let's, things. Let's work on. through them. <laughs> so number one, Whitney. I, yep. I want to say weighty there. It's because a godless. I've got it weight is, in my head. Is, yes, yeah. Uh, I, it, it doesn't look too dissimilar. Yeah. but So Whitney, they're at the farmer's market. Clark's there. His parents are there. And Lana's like, hey, Clark, why weren't you at the dance last night? And he's like, oh, uh, I got tied up. It was a bit tied up. I, I was yeah. like, yes, yes, very good. And I was like, I bet you love that stupid pun, didn't you, you prick? <laughs> Not when it's coming from the wood that is uh, Tom Welling, no. <laughs> when I deliver yeah. a bad pun, I've got a smirk in my face. Some, no, you um... don't. No, you don't. You deliver them as straight as you possibly can. Okay, but the smirk appears afterwards. I'm knowing that I'm doing it. He, He's just... That was a straight line. He didn't even acknowledge that he just made he's, a pun. He's, he's smirking on the inside. <laughs> well, it's more smirking than he does on the outside in the ten seasons of this show. <laughs> it might well be. Expression? Huh. Yes, what's that? Tom Welling laughs in the face of expression. Well, no, he didn't. That would be an expression. That was the jo- that was the joke. I know, I know. I'm playing it up for making it redundant. I like ruining your jokes. God damn it. <sighs> so, so Whitney has the gall, the gall, to come over to Clark and be like, hey, you know that was just a prank, right? Can I have Lana's necklace back, by the way? Because it's her favourite necklace. <laughs> Uh, no, credit credits Clark going. Hey, no, no, you want it? Go find it. It's in the bloody woods or in the field. Go, 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 rummage around. I couldn't believe. And do you know the best part was? Is Clark walks out of the scene and Whitney's just standing there staring at him like he's upset, like he's just pissed like, him like, off. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What? Whitney's there going. What have you been such a dick for? <laughs> so that's that's complaint number one. Well, complaint yeah. number two. All the bug stuff before, obviously. Yeah, yeah, as well. yeah. Uh, we actually opened after the, the titles uh, with uh, this flying sequence, uh, well, this dream sequence. The camera's going through the sky and then it's over Lana's bed and she looks up and says, oh, your fault. And then Clark actually wakes up and he's floating above his bed. And here's a big problem I have with this, right? And this is more of a retrospect thing than, than it being a problem on its own, is that the flying doesn't actually come in the show I mean, technically, there's something in season four where it kind of happens, but for him, flying doesn't really come until season ten. 
So in hindsight, I feel like teasing it this early on, like this, yeah, is a bit if weird. If I recall, they always go along the lines of, you know, he has the ability, but he's not consciously, you know, he's not okay oh, sure. with it. So, yeah, they, they bullshit around it for I a mean, long I mean, I can kind of buy that from a logic perspective. I just think as a viewer, you see him floating in episode two of season one, and, and then... Like, oh, he's going to fly soon. Yeah, like, no, we're going to no, build I'm up with to you. that. So, I, I, yeah, it's just a hindsight thing. It's not a big that, deal. That's but... one of those that we can complain about now, but well, as it aired, I don't think that would have been a criticism. Well, yeah, I think as it aired, no one was thinking this is going to be ten seasons long, and it'll <laughs> be the last <laughs> episode before he actually flies properly. That, that is a good point. Uh, unless he's otherwise possessed or or whatever. Yes, other versions as well, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so, so, Farmer's Market. Lana... Lex actually is around and he's listening to things and he's he's getting his he's, he's, he's bald head into where it doesn't belong, and he he ends up going to Clark or Clark comes to him and he's like, hey, I got this necklace from the from the cornfield. Can, sorry, can I talk about Lex oh. at the farmers market just wasting that apple? What a prick! <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you know, he's Bones. talking to Clark. He's like, hey, can I have an apple? And Clark's like, yeah, sure, go and have an apple. Why not? They're giving them. They seem to just give them away to all the friends. I don't, I'm not sure if they're paying for them. Because obviously they're there to sell. I'm not sure if any of the friends are actually giving them any money or if they're just going, here, I'll have one of these. And, you know, like, he takes like two bites out of this apple then just chucks it back into their truck. No, it doesn't take it with him. doesn't throw it on the floor. Back The, the half-eaten apple back in with all the fresh apples. What a prick. I can't... I can't I, yeah, I can't... Uh... I mean, that's, that's more annoying than most of the shit Lex actually plans to do. Yeah. My problem with Lex actually is it's not an acting problem. It's the way they still keep filming him and having the music as if yeah he's going to be a villain. He's evil as shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's when he's looking at the necklace and I'm like, there's no reason why to play this as ominous right now. And yeah, it's, it's like, just mm. no, no curiosity. Understandable. It's like, hey, what's this? Yeah, play it like that. That that's perfectly fine. But this is like, oh, he's going to do something evil with this. Yeah, I get. It. It's just like they didn't really account for the fact that they were going to, you know, go three, four seasons before properly turning them evil, right? They, so, they're already like teasing it in episode two, and it's like, no, we're going to, like, their friendship's going to get a lot stronger <laughs> before it gets worse. Yeah, I can't remember if it does, but I really hope that kind of dies down. Once they realise, you know what, we're going to take some time with this, yeah. we'll cool it on that stuff a bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe they do. It might I, do. I can't remember. They, they might have, you know, early on they might have thought, oh, we'll do that this season, and then, you know, they changed their minds halfway through or something. So Lex goes to see Lana, who doesn't actually know. Not really. He's like, oh, no, by, by reputation, essentially. Yeah. Friend of your aunt's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, uh, and he gets to chatting, and he basically, uh, as Lana puts it later, uh, you know, lays some breadcrumbs uh, to, yeah. to, to find out about what, what Whitney did to Clark. And she, Clark comes home at one point and he's actually got the necklace in the little... This is actually how he finds out about the lead. Uh, which, by the way, was something that was, again, really bugging me in this episode is they really made a point of over... Like, not so much when he found out it was in the lead box. Because, I mean, I, I, it does feel a little bit weird, but, you know, I think from Lexi's perspective, why is he specifically asking what this is made of? Kind of thing. You know, it was a little bit clunky. Not a big deal. Yeah. But later on, when he's fighting the uh, you know the bug boy, and he's, he's you know he's got some kryptonite sort of infused in him, so he's, he's hurting Clark when he's close to him, and Clark lands behind this like block, and he's like, and he, he realizes that he's not hurt anymore, and then he says it loud, "It's made of it's lined with lead." Yeah, I, I don't know if it's that it's got the that he's got lead uh, kryptonite in him. I didn't think it was that. I think it was more just the area they were in had kryptonite. Oh, was it? Okay, fair enough. Because yeah, they they made a point of saying, oh, you know, he was always dizzy when they came there as kids. Ah, uh, yeah, and they said, oh, he's got fewer heights. Uh, very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Superman, he's got fewer heights. <laughs> so, so, so Lana's in the bar, and I was, oh, here we go. Lana and Clark. The best part of episode one was them together and her getting all mopey and talking about how what life means to her and her parents, her dead parents. My God, she goes on about her dead parents more than Batman does. So, he comes in and he's he's walking up, and she's like, "This is amazing in here," and I'm like. How's that amazing? It's a barn. It's he's, a barn. Yeah, he, he's it's got, a barn. He's got he's got a sofa up there. Yeah, he's, sure. got, he's got a sofa and a couple of board games and a telescope. Why is that amazing? It's uh, nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's not amazing. And yeah, he's like, oh yeah, my dad calls it my fortress of solitude. Yeah. 
Do you know what? I, I have to, you know, last week with, with Lois and Clark, we were saying, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the Superman line is kind of set up as, you know, Lois thinks of that because Lucy said it to her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is this, like, it could, could this play the same way, essentially, where later when we actually get a Fortress of Solitude, would it be like he names it that, beca- you know, because he had this and that was there? I, feel I can't like, remember if he chooses the name or not. Yeah, I feel like... I don't remember him choosing the name in that way. I just remember it being the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, I don't remember if he chooses that or if the, you know, Jorah but tells him it's that. I, f- I feel like... If you're working that out, that's you doing that, and not the writers. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. I'm, I'm really gonna go. Can it play that way? But and this is why it's clunky. You, you're, you're making a, a weird little reference to something that's really specific in this case. Like "forces of salt" is a very specific phrase. It is very specific. So it feels really weird later on when he actually has a fortress of solitude, and he never, you know, unless you go with the logic that he named it after his barn <laughs> because that's what his dad called it. Unless you go with that logic, it's just like, well, he never thinks, oh, that's what my dad called the barn. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is why I, can't, I honestly can't remember, but I really hope he names it that. Because if he does, at least I can justify it with this. Hmm. But of course, that's the least of our worries. Oh, oh yes, it is. Because as I said, Lana then spends her time... Looking out the the, the the what's not a window really is it? <laughs> it's a hole. Yeah, the the big the big. Uh, I don't know. Tell us in the comments. What, what, what's what's that big hole in the barn calls? Is that a door? Is it the door? It's just, it's up, isn't it? So you know, it's upstairs. Well, it's too high to be a door. You say that actually. You just reminded me of something. Uh, back in back in my uh, first my first school, there was a door. Halfway up the wall on the outside. <laughs> what? I think it was there because there used to be stairs there or something, and when they remodeled, they took the stairs, but the door was still there. That's amazing. So there was just a random door. You'd like, always want to walk through that door, wouldn't you? On, on the, there's a floor, you know, obviously just one up, but it was just yeah. there. I stand corrected. It could be a door. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I don't think it is, think it is yeah. but it could be. <laughs> This is giving me think of that because I agree. It's halfway you, up. You, you, you have given fair precedence of that that, that it's plausible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's more obvious it's a door because it was like you know it was a, the door shape, there's a handle, the handle you know, all, yeah, yeah. All, all, all the door you know trimmings, there's all, all those bells and whistles. <laughs> what makes a door a door? Yeah, this this really is just a hole. Uh, where was it going? Oh yeah, so so L- Lana, Kristen yeah. Crook. And Tom Welling, they're our leads. And all I could think during this scene when they're talking about, oh, my parents, oh, my favourite necklace has gone missing. I really want to apologise for Whitney. It can be this. And oh, and he's like, oh, I'm glad you're here. And, you know, I've waited to see you. He's like, oh, you can see my house from here. All I could think during this entire scene was these two both slept with someone to get these roles because this was not acting ability. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That awkward moment where she's like, "Oh, you, you know, you can see my house from here," and he's like, "Oh, oh, can you really? Didn't know." And just knocks the, the telescope up because, because, like I said, he he leaves it pointing at a house. Anyone can just walk in and go, "Hey, you, you know, you're looking at Lana's house, right?" Ah, oh, dear. And it, like the the whole thing, I just how could you cast two people this bad? I don't, I don't understand. It. It's it's horrendous. It's pretty pretty atrocious she, she, I, I almost like sometimes when it's just a little bit with her it's not as bad but in this scene where it's just them two like talking back and forth and again she gets mopey about her parents she's, she's talking about oh i know it's weird but it's you know it's a I piece can't of the... wait till she has a character beyond mopey parent shit there's yeah. gonna be something i mean i'm sure there's more than that at some point yeah she, she, she's two things right now she's moping about her parents constantly um but he, and still not becoming Batman. That at least make her useful. Uh, or she is something that Whitney is constantly terrified that someone's trying to steal from him because he thinks Bug Boy. Because Bug Boy, of course, after he goes through his metamorphosis, he's all you know. His spots are all gone, and he's got his hair slicked back. He's all normal looking. Uh, oh, which by the way, that was the other awkward Superman reference I wanted to bring up. Because she sneaks, up, he sneaks up behind Lana at the, the fair, and she turns around and goes, "Oh, sh- oh shoot! I didn't recognize you without your glasses." I'm like, "Oh." Very good. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't actually that bad, but still, it's it, not, it but bugged me. 
I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Spider-Man 3 took, uh, took influence from this episode. <laughs> Are we just going to go over my bugged me pun? I am. Okay. Uh, I, I very intentionally did. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what was that douchebag's name anyway? Greg. That was his name. Greg. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's baffling to me. It, do you know the first thing is, is that, I mean, you've got people on the show who are obviously good. You, you know, I think uh, Jonathan Kent, of course, uh, what's his name? John Schneider. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's pretty good. Uh, he's got a nice little moment where he's like, it's, it's after he's been attacked by the bug boy. Bug boy showed up to attack him because now he thinks that, you know, Clark's important to her, so he wants to take yeah. him out now. And he pushes Jonathan Kent over the thing into the, the, the big sort of... Uh, turbine? Uh, turbine, yeah. Uh, and Clark sort of goes down in his super speed to, like, you know, block his yeah. fall. And there's a lot of things where it's like, oh, this is... Out, you know, it can't, this can't be true. You know, this is all, all tall tales. This can't be real. And, you know, Martha is like, hey, like, says the guy who's had a spaceship hidden in his barn for, for 12 <laughs> years. And it, is, it just lingers on him for, like, a good couple of minutes where he's like... <laughs> it's, it's uh, honestly John Kent has the moment of the episode for me uh, it's you know after he saves uh, after Clark saves Whitney yeah I saw that wrong yeah, yeah and um, he, you know Clark's like I mean, you know I saved him and, and, and John's like yeah no we're, we're proud of you you did good you know like, there's no oh you know you shouldn't have done that you know be careful he didn't see you it's just like no we're proud of you you did good you saved him yeah D- all the joke, joke I'm actually getting sick of already, though, is that I need them to stop thinking Clark's hurt and then being surprised when he's not. Like, okay, can we get past uh, that? That can only last so long. Yeah. Like, because I think up till like last episode, they didn't know that he was indestructible, right? Like, they they, they knew yeah, he was it, stronger, but it, he, yeah, when he it, puts his hand in the in the wood chipper, that was a shock to him. Yeah, it, it makes sense that, you know, he's not tried to hurt himself before. Like, you know, exactly. he's, he, the car crash proved it to himself. But, um, but hey, uh, so, by the way, that fire effect when he was holding Whitney looked really Ooh, bad. Oh, rough. Yeah. I mean, the, again, the car explosion itself, solid. No, but the fire that goes around him is really bad looking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also really bad looking is Bug Boy jumping. Oh, no. Do you know what takes the cake for worse, though? Oh, go on. Bug Boy's web thing at his mother out of his mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that takes the cake as the worst effect of the episode. Uh, Easily. I don't know. The jumping was more often. And after he after he kills himself, because, of course, this is another thing I forgot about Smallville, is that all the villains of the week who find out Clark has superpowers conveniently die. Not you No, know, Clark doesn't kill them, but they conveniently die so that no one knows his identity. Yeah, I feel like there's one soon-ish that goes just like in a in a mental hospital, and so yeah, no one believes them. I, 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 but given how many Freak of the Week episodes this is going to have, it's kind of insane. It's, it's a lot of dead kids. <laughs> is there anyone in school left by the time we get to season three? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who's who's still moving to Smallville and and, and doing this? Oh God, uh, so. Yeah, so I I, I kind of like the scene with, with obviously Alison Mack, uh, you know. Uh, Solid. Yeah, yeah. I said Alison Mack, not Alison. That's Alison Mack. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doubting myself. I'm thinking of the secret world of Alex Mack. I was thinking I meant I said her name by accident. You, you didn't. You got yeah. it right. Don't worry. I liked that show as a kid. I never watched it. I watched that. No. no. It was a fun little superhero show. Uh, anyway, so. I like that scene. She's she, she's all she's kind of pointing out, hey Clark, you always do that where you kind of don't tell us what you're actually doing, like because she asked for info. He asked for info on Bug Boy, and she sort of gives him a and bit of an answer to run off. and tries to just run off. And he's like, hey, don't do that. Don't shut me out. Like, you know, help, let us help. She, I like that she's calling him on a shit. She, she's basically saying, hey, I mean, she doesn't know he's got powers yet, but like, if we're going to be a Scooby Gang, let's be a Scooby Gang. Don't don't. It, it, it is. It's like let's let's not fight this. Let's just let's just do this. Yeah, so you know, she gets some info from her wall of beard and whatnot, and they go snooping into into Bug Boy's house, finds finds the dead dead mum and the Papa Roach poster, uh, the aforementioned yes. Yes. Papa and, Roach and, poster, and all the the creepy Lana stuff. And the creepy Lana stuff, uh, which his mother, by the way, did find as well. She she knew her son. Yeah, was... that, yeah, that that was how the episode starts, pretty much. You know, for her, it was yeah. like, hey, this is weird. Stop doing this. It was funny about it actually. I think it was like. The, the video taping or doesn't really play that much into the episode all that much, really. I mean, no, it's, no, it's just to show his obsession. Yeah, it's proof that he's obsessed with her, but like, you you could like take it out, and it would probably not affect that much. 
Yeah. I think the only thing that it really does is it has the, the mother have a reason to discover it, which is, uh, you know, which leads to why he kills her, because, you know, she's you're really going at him then. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, there are other ways to do it. It's just not that bad, though, as, as far as the ideas go. That one doesn't really bother me. Oh, it doesn't bother me. I, I'm just... Like, it never really played into the plot in a big way, because I thought it was going to build to, like... Okay, yeah. Using no, the footage sh- for I something. I think it should or... show, oh, this guy's creepy as shit. Look, he's going yeah. around filming her without her knowing. Yeah, that's the thing, though. There's no salty. Just... What it is, is, is like, when we kill him at the end, you're not going to care. Yeah, he's so cliche creepy, like, the whole time. Yeah. To, 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 again, like, a ridiculous degree that, it just you know, he plays off as a caricature. He's, he's not a real person in any, any way at all, so... Um. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Clark fights him a little bit, and that. Yeah. That's that, that pretty much it. Yeah. That, done. Yeah. I like. I like the song at the end. Yeah. So it ends okay. Um. Yeah. It's not the Google Dolls. The Google Dolls were last episode, I think. But yeah. This. This was uh, Lifehouse. Lifehouse. Ah, it was. Yeah. I don't, uh, yeah. You're right. It sounds a lot like the Google Dolls, though, which is why I was thinking about because I was like, is this a Google Dolls song again? And I was like, no. Yeah. yeah it's similar. It but no. No. I do, I do like the song, and it, it, I think this, this is that's you know the the source music is one of these things where I go, yeah, this is pro OCW because yeah, you know, they they do that a lot. They do not as often as this show does though. This show does it. I mean, this show, this episode had like four songs in it. I think it's got more than that. At least four that I can remember off the top of my head. I mean, we've mentioned four because you've got so there's the the Papa Roach one. There's the Weezer there's, one. Weezer one. Life house there's, at the end. Life house at the end. There's the one where Whitney's driving along. Yes, right. That's four. That's four right there. Just without even thinking, I'm sure there's others as well. And I feel like they, they all really emphasise the song as well. It's not just in the background. It's always like front and center. Yeah, like the end one. I get that's the end montage thing. All right, fine. Yeah, and of course Clark gives the necklace back, but 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 in secret, and by not using it as a sort of. Like you know, oh, like me because I found it's the not, necklace. It's not a uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it's like okay, don't get me wrong. Yeah, if it's, a, it's a nice enough thing. If you're developing Clark Kent, then that makes a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just. Oh, what what, what have we got next week? <laughs> I don't know what we've got next week. Do we I, have, I, I think we have Fire. What's the episode name? I think I'll see if I can. We either have a Fire villain or an Ice villain. No, it's the Fire. It's Hothead. Oh, okay. I knew it was one of those though. When when's Fat Amy Adams? That's got to be soon, right? I remember that being really early. Yeah, that's like episode five or six, I think. Cool. Looking forward to that one. I don't think we're going to get there before we get back to the CW stuff. Uh, I don't know. If that, 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 that'll be like the big first thing we do in summer is we get back to Amy Adams. Come back to see us talk about Amy Adams. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and our last Superman related role, role ever. Yes, yes, that never happened again. Yeah, never happened again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's but, saying something that. I mean, she's not bad as Lois, obviously, but. Uh, it's saying something that I hate Batman v Superman so much that I will take fat Amy Adams and shitty episode of Smallville over. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is the thing, like that that says how how much I really despise that universe for all the problems with Smallville. This John Kent is like a million times better. This is John Kent, like it is. Oh yeah, no, John John Kent's pretty good. Martha's okay. Uh, I like Chloe and. Lex, from an acting point of view, is okay. They play everything with them really on the nose. That I don't yeah, yeah, like. they, they overplay it, but I still like him. Lana is just, oh, Clark oh. is just, oh. Uh, and honestly, Pete has, like, at least, I mean, it's only been two episodes, but he has nothing to do. <laughs> He's just kind of there. Was, was he even in this episode? <laughs> he was, he was with them like, in the house. Oh, yeah, 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 it was, uh, for like two scenes. He's basically just always there for Chloe to talk to. You're right. So it's uh, it makes sense that okay, once Chloe knows, that's when we can get rid of Pete. Pretty much, yeah. Because you, you don't need him after that. Because they get rid of Pete in season three, and then it, it, do, you know, do you know what it is on a like on a more condensed version that we we've seen more recently? You know, Arrow. Yeah. You know how the start of that show, we had him narrating everything, and it was really annoying. Mm-hmm. And then he got Diggle on the team. It's like okay, well, I've got someone to talk to now, so. I don't need to narrate everything. Pete, Pete is the narration. It's like Chloe needs to talk to someone. She can't yeah. just narrate. And it's like, well, well, once she's there with Clark, well, we don't need Pete anymore. 
Yeah, that makes that makes some sense. Oh well, I guess that's a, <laughs> a Smallville episode too. Yeah. Oh God, this was. This this, this was a maybe a mistake, but we have committed. <laughs> I, I I sent a message to Connor before I hit the opening title saying this is awful. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I fell asleep during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to go through and find where I'd fallen asleep. It was twelve minutes in. Yeah, this was up. <laughs> anyway, I guess we'll move on to some writer things. We have two episodes of Young Justice to talk about. First one is season one, episode three. It's called Welcome to Happy Harbor. Uh, is that the right episode? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, that's, that's that's fair. I. Uh, uh, for some reason, I just did not recognise the name. The, the name doesn't really link necessarily to the episode in, in a really overt way. Yeah. Um, so we have Miss Marshall on the team, and uh, the first half of the episode is mostly them in the uh, the Justice uh, Mountain Justice, Justice yes. and they are. She's kind of shown them around. She's got a very bubbly personality. She's concerned that Superboy doesn't like her very much. I have a question. I know I okay. said last week for a while she can be quite annoying. Mm-hmm. And it's one uh, one specific phrase that gets quite annoying. Yeah, she said it like three times. Yes, the hello, Megan. Yeah, hello, Megan. Uh, how, how annoyed are you by that as of right now? Not really. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. I'm, I'm, I'm fine right now. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe it'll get worse uh, as we go, but no, I'm, I'm okay with it right now. It, it gets worse before it gets better. Yeah, uh, there's debating about who the who the leader is and so on. Actually, that's next episode. Never mind. That's next one. Yeah, that's the problem. Doing two at the same time is that I'm I'm, I'm mixing and matching. Yeah, no, this is the the why why do we exist? Episode. Yeah, why do we exist? Are we really a team? I'm not sure we are. Chris, we don't see Roy at the start. We will see Roy. He's like not nope, not involved. I'm not doing this. And they're in the they're in the the, the, the mountain for half of the episode. Uh, Red tornadoes there. But then, and you know, it's and you know, Miss Martian's kind of shown them around. She's been making cookies and burning them. She she's got her her jet. It's visible. I was kind of getting to grips with uh, her power set in this episode because it's not the same as Jean's. There's a few differences. It's similar, but she's not quite there. Yeah. yeah. But she has a uh, telekinesis, which Jean doesn't have typically, right? No, no, that's true. Because she was like picking people up and other yeah, things yeah. and all sorts. Um. But they give her some limitations. She she can she can shape shift, but she can't change her gender when she shape shifts yet. She says it's harder. She can't do it yet. Yeah, it's, it's so it sets up that it's possible she can do it. Yeah, but she's not. She struggles. Same with phasing. She says, "Oh, that's a really advanced technique." So she could maybe do it at some point, but she can't do it yet. Yeah. So it's nice. It's setting up things for the future. Yeah. That said, she's already pretty powerful with everything she can do. To be fair, so it's she just, is. She is. Yeah. You know, she's just flying, turning invisible, telekinesis. I, I mean, less setting up things for the future, but more, you know, when there's a, a real crutch moment, and it's yeah. like, okay, no, we need something. You know, that, you know, they've got to really pull off something special. It's like, well, we know it can be done. She's. It's not out of the realm of her possibility. It's just difficult. Yeah. Uh, so this thing, you know, uh, Mister Twister uh, starts messing around, uh, doing his thing. Making twisters and stuff, and the team go out. Uh, they, they sort of come across this, and Miss Martian. They say up here in the episode that she can't read Red Tornado because he's not human. He's not got a brain in the same way. Yeah. He doesn't have a, a organic mind. So, and she can't read this guy either. She's like, oh, this is just a test. This is, this is just Red Tornado uh, in disguise. He's, Pretty he's, sound logic, to be fair. Yeah, uh, turns out that's not the case. <laughs> and uh, they, they, get, they get pretty badly beat up. They, they ultimately win, of course, but... Uh, yeah, the, the, even, uh, you know, these are two separate episodes, but it's all about, you know, working as a team and how they're not really a, a team unit yet. Yeah, they, they definitely split up in, into two into two they significant do, but chunks. This, it, like, but as uh, thematically, they're linked by that. No, but thematically, it still has a breaking point, though, because at the end of the third part, or the third episode, it still has that moment where we go, oh, maybe we can be a team. There's still yeah. an arc there that ends. Oh, there is, yeah. And then it, it you know, it goes on to the next phase of start, you know, picking a leader in the next episode and actually going yeah. out on a real mission that's not just sort of, like, thrust upon us. Um, and that's kind of it. And, you know, there's the whole thing with Superboy being a bit of a dickhead. Um... <laughs> And getting mad every time she uses telepathy, and uh, like try to train her to like you know you, you don't just use it in everyone. It's rude. It's, you know it's you know you're invading people's Sp- uh, spying on the bad guys. Yeah, don't invade people's privacy. That kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, apologizes at the end, and you know they have some, have some fun moments. Um, I, no, I had, I had more fun with with this episode. I, I think 
Uh, it's all this sort of team building stuff that I like. I think the fight with Mr. Twister is is okay. Like I'm not particular. Yeah, I like it when they come together as a team, though. Like you know, and the they play off each other well. I think. Yeah, I I like the the building. I I but I like the 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 mountain stuff more. I think. I I I think I like the downtime here. I like the okay. How do these characters interact with each other? What's the what are the connections like? What what's the banter between? I, I, I think it's important that they do that first because it's really going. Okay, no, we we want you to know who these characters are before anything really happens, and it's it's working on that first and foremost. Yeah, but it it goes back again to this being a fairly serialized show where it's setting up these things that are going to be relevant going forward. You know, they reference the the past events, like you know, Superboy is not particularly happy with his thoughts being invaded because like at Cadmus, that was kind of a thing that was happening. Yeah, all the time. It's, it's there's bad memories of it, and you know, like they're like. Dick's not allowed to give his name. Yeah, Batman's, Batman has forbidden it. Batman's forbidden his real name, even though Wally's like, yeah, I'm Wally. And... Yeah, yeah, everyone else is like, yeah, I've got names. Yeah. Although Superboy doesn't really yet. Yeah, not really. Uh, I assume he gets named Connor at some point. He does, yes. Yeah. Uh, but hey. Uh, so, he's, he's also against uh, capes and tights. He's, he's strictly sticking to his t shirt. Yes. Yeah. And Miss Martian seems to have the hots for him. Oh, absolutely. That seems to be a thing. M- much to Wally's... Uh, yes, uh, he's not happy about it, is he? Yeah, he's not. But, hey, that's, that's the thing. Uh, so, that was a good team-building episode. And yep. I, I think that carries on to episode four, uh, which is called Drop Zone. And this is actually where Batman's in the episode, and he actually gives them their mission. Hey, do some recon, Santa Prisca. And, you know, Bane's in the episode, and they're, they're setting this up. That, that that's the the first thing i want to say about this episode you know you talk about how oh, it's really quite serialized mm. and obviously this this was aimed at kids like this was a you know like, but it, it, it obviously found a much more accessible yeah, audience but you but you're going to talk about the fact that we have subtitled yeah this elements. just throws it in it's like you know a good chunk of subtitles right at the start for a yeah. good you know, two or three minutes yeah it's in spanish with subtitles when it needs to be and that that did throw me off i was like oh i'm you know because i think i'd forgive like a cartoon that's aimed at kids for just having them speak in english you know just in an accent i'd be like fine yeah. whatever and i think it's things like this is why it never really found its kid audience that it needed because it, it, it appealed to people like us a lot more yeah. it's like, oh this is the show we want and it ultimately didn't sell the toys which is why well, it originally got cancelled well even the fact that um like you know it, it's it's young justice but it is set in a functioning dc world where batman can pop in and give them a mission like yeah it feels like it's in an actual dc universe you could almost have other shows set in here and have it work, absolutely work together i mean you could argue that the actual justice league show kind of fits with it. I mean, I, th- I think they did establish this as its own Earth. It but... probably is, but I mean, you, if you wanted to just kind of like in your head, yeah, 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 you can head it. Why you, not? You probably could. I mean, why not? Um, there's nothing about this Batman that feels that different from you know old Batman yeah, from the other really. shows. But you know, other than the voice, of course, is not Kevin Conroy. But it's it's fine though. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so it's like oh, because because Batman's asked like who's the leader, and he's like decide that amongst yourselves. You know, he's all he's all Batman. He has to has to be grim, and. You know, Dex just kind of assuming. Well, I mean, <laughs> I clearly know. it's me. Yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm the I'm the Batman of the team, so of course I am. Uh, and the the only real opposition to him is Wally. Wally's the one who's like kind of insistent that he no, maybe I should be the. I am faster than you. I can I can do much better things. You don't even have powers. Um, so they go on this mission and they see there's there's this conflict happening between Bane's people and. Uh, this uh, this other group of mercenaries who we find out later on, or uh, well, we, we, we kind of know from the start the Cobra, but like also you get uh, what, what's his face, Sportmaster, uh, shows yeah. up. He's working for them, and we've got this kind of battle for this new strain of Venom. It's the Super Venom, essentially. It's mixed it, yeah, with mixed with the Blockbuster. And it's like yeah. okay, this is interesting. Again, building on previous episodes' ideas. Yeah, building on episode one and two with the Blockbuster stuff with Cadmus, and. Yeah, we, we get into a thing where they actually kind of align themselves with Bane a little bit. Because they're, they're, they're supposed to be like recon, they're supposed to be like contacting the League, but Dick's like, no, we're not leaving until we know for sure. Um, yeah, because it goes off the rails a bit early on, where, you know, he vanishes into the into the jungle, and, mm-hmm. and Wally tries to find him and trip. See, the thing is, though, is, later on, Aqualad kind of points out why he did that, and I actually kind of like this. I like that he's like, no, you're so used to working with Batman where you never have to say anything to each other, you just know how each other work. Yeah. It's an unspoken thing. 
but this is a team where no, we have to talk to each other because a we're working together for the first time. We all have different fighting styles. We you know, but you and Batman, you're both fighting in the same way essentially. You're, you're both yeah, you know, you, you just you you've got this over time. You know what you're doing, and and this is one of those things where I was saying how these two episodes are still linked thematically by becoming a team. Yeah, they make the the, the big moment at the end of yeah. episode three, but even here, it's like they're still. They're not a fully functioning unit because of things like this, where there's these assumptions still. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if episode five is going to do this, but I'd almost argue that it's not so much that these two episodes are actually linked as a sort of semi two part or anything. I think it's just this is naturally if you're going to do this in yeah. a in a this reasonable is where pace, it's going to be. you're going to have this over a few episodes. I can see five and maybe six still being this like. Not, I mean, obviously, well, yeah, because we we don't have the full team yet. Of yeah. course. But obviously, obviously, we'll be followed in the process where they're feeling a bit more comfortable, but they might not still quite be there yet. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing when when they, they pick Aqualad as the as the leader because he's the one with the sort of more more level head. Uh, mm. He even says like this is temporary because Dick was you know he was meant to lead this team. He just is. Yeah, uh, I like that they acknowledge that because in our heads we're all going well. Obviously, Dick's here. That's why it's why this episode works so well. I think because we we just assume that yeah okay Dick's going to be the leader. Because you know we have that knowledge going in, and it it subverts that. He goes, well, he's not really doing a good job as a leader, and it, it, it subverts that. He goes, okay, no, we'll have someone else. But but we we accept no. This is DC. We you know we're gonna have we're gonna have him leading the team at some point because that's the way things are meant to be. Yeah, um, yeah. It feels like it's, it's playing to DC sort of history and continuity. Well, not con- continuity is not the right word because it's not in continuity with the comics. H- but... History, sure. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, expectation. So what? I actually really like the use of the team working together with their powers in this one. Specifically, stuff, stuff like I actually really like Miss Martian's invisible effect. I think that looks quite cool. Yeah. Uh, but she, she's like sort of hovering over and she's watching Sportsmaster and Cobra and all this mm. stuff going on. And like that's going on. Superboy's, you know, punching things because of course he is. Uh, and there was some stuff in the, the last one I liked as well. I, I liked in the last one where uh, Superboy gets hit so hard that he like makes a big crater and the, like, a big line, like, you know, like yeah. a ship's landed. And the, and the yeah, ground. it has a similar moment here, you know, where they come out of the, 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 the ship, where they go into the drop zone, yeah. and they're all going down on the, the, the vines sort of and things. From he the just ship. jumps. Yeah. He just jumps. He's like, see, told you to be fine. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, that wasn't the question. It was the stealth. Yeah, that was a loud noise. That, that's seemed like an explosion happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, fair, fair point by uh, by Robin. But no, so uh, no, so I liked all that stuff. I liked like her using that as recon and like you know getting information, and then everyone, and obviously Bane, you know, betrays them of course because he's Bane. Of course he did. Of course he is, and I, I like that. You know, it made sense that, that okay, no, we will use Bane while it makes sense, but of course he's still a villain. It, it works. Yeah, yeah, uh, totally. And uh, no, so no, I, I had a blast with this, and obviously at the end of the episode, we find out that this is all connecting back to something we set up at the end of the first pair of episodes uh the light yeah uh, where they're upset now because it because we actually find this out in the in episode three but we find out here that mr twister was also connected to them and like hey once is whatever two is a coincidence but this is three times these these little brats have yeah, uh three three's an enemy yeah and I, I what was cracking me up is like and i'm not making fun of it it was just it was cracking me up that i could almost i could almost just hear them go and we'd gotten away with it too if we were those <laughs> meddling kids yeah yeah do you, know you mentioned there how they, they didn't bring it up in episode three with Mr. Twister. Mm. I really like that. I like that they didn't feel the need to go, hey, remember the light every single yeah, yeah. episode. It was, no, okay, we showed you at the start, we introduced them, and then we we bring them up again. It's like, oh, but that was them as well. It's like, okay, so now we're going to be guessing going forward, okay, is everything them? Is it all related? And, you know, it makes sense if it is, but it's like, okay, there's a goal here. No, no, um, I, 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 I'm on board with that. I think um, uh, I, I like the, the the when they get back to the the mountain, and Batman's like, "Oh, you did everything wrong. You're gonna get a report detailing every single wrong move you made." Uh, but regardless, good job. <laughs> you yeah. thought on your feet. You got, you got things done. Yeah, yeah. No, no plan survives first contact. So yeah. you know, it's how you adapt that that's that's what counts. Yeah. Um, I, I, now that we've had these two, I'm kind of looking forward to that moment where Dick finally reveals who he is to everyone. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, he's always got his sunglasses on when he's not an outfit, as if that like covers his identity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Because it's not even like Adam are going to know like who he is. I guess. I mean, I mean, maybe if they've heard of him, they know he knows. But Bruce, Bruce is worried they'll know he's Batman or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's it's good stuff. I'm liking how it, he's all the characters. It's, yeah, when he does, it's going to be a moment of trust, isn't it? It's like yeah. okay, well, no, I trust you enough. That it's my decision. 
Yeah, and, and even uh, Miss Martian refers to her her mistakes with Mister Twister in this episode. She says, "Oh, after that, I'm not. I don't want to be the leader." Like, that's you know. Yeah, she, yeah. She, she, and she, Superboy's she's... like, "God no." Yeah, because I, I especially liked uh, the, the the whole the whole uh, in the last episode with the uh, pretending to be Red Tornado to trick Twister. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, it's actually her. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was nice. Because it, it plays as a nice reveal as well because she's just been on the comms. With Red Tornado, mm-hmm. so it plays like okay, no, he could have just showed up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I thought it was two two solid episodes. Uh, I, I specifically like the action in them as well, on top of the actual character stuff, which is impressive for. Because I, I sometimes feel like an animated shows the actions where I kind of like it loses me a little bit because it's you know it's ultimately. No, it's, uh... I think action can struggle in animation for, for various reasons. It can feel like it doesn't have the impact or whatever. But for the most part, I was enjoying how they were using the powers and that kind of thing. It's got a nice flow to it. Uh, but mostly I'm here for the characters and the continuity and them building as a team and their Which interactions. Is, yeah, I think this show's a lot cleverer than you expect. Like it, it it's, it's got a lot more going on than you'd think. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's remembering who the characters are and uh, it's letting the development happen episode to episode. Whereas most cartoons, typically it'll just always be the status quo again when you come back. Yeah, there's there's genuine growth already from the start of this show. There's not just, oh, hey, this is this character, or, you know, that's that, they're set in stone and that's it for this show. Yeah, and, and, and even the good animated shows, even Batman the animated series, like, he's, he's still basically just Batman the entire time. It's Batman, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really change. You'll have stories in each episode, of course, but it, 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 you very rarely got anything where you'd reference a previous episode. Whereas this show's four episodes in, and it's referenced all, th- like, episode four referenced both the first double episode and the last episode. It did both. Yeah. It referenced the light from the first episode. It referenced uh, Mister Twister twice from the last episode. It, you know, every time. And and always where it makes sense as well. It's not yeah, just yeah. hey, look, remember, because you know sometimes it can be remember this was a thing, but here it's never that. It's not. This makes sense in conversation as to what they're saying or what we're being shown. Yeah. So, no, uh, very very cool, very cool. Um, I know it's funny. I, I am actually recognising Nolan North as Connor Kent. I just want to point that out. Yeah, yeah, it's really obvious, isn't it? I can hear him like, what? what? Why, is, why is Nathan Drake uh, pretending to be Superboy? This is weird. Stop it. Because he's voiced about a million things. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And, oh man, Danny Trio was Bane. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I did not know yeah. that. Uh, and Arnold Vosley was Cobra? Hmm. It's amazing some of the actors that pop up in these animated shows as voices. Because it's, it's the bit roles. It's like, well, we can just yeah. get them for an hour. Yeah. Arnold Vosloo, if you don't know who that is, because oh, he's not that known a name. He, he was the mummy in the you know the nineteen ninety nine mummy movie and the sequels. Uh, for the record, we don't talk about those. The sequels. Sequels. I think the second one's watchable. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 one, 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 the, the finale of it's got the really really bad effects with the the rock oh, okay. scorpion king. But... So you should have said the mummy and its sequel. Okay, sure. Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. We don't talk about. Exactly. It doesn't exist. The Scorpion King and its three sequels we don't talk about. Yes. Yeah, I found out once there was a fourth Scorpion King and went, what, there was a two and three as well? Like, <laughs> what did that happen? <laughs> Bizarre. Uh, so, no, so I, I guess that wraps us up. I guess that, you know, uh, wraps up this week's show. Uh, and we should be back next week, although, I mean, next, next week is New Year's Eve when we'll be recording. Yes. I think we currently have it planned to try and fit it in earlier in the week. We do. So we should still have an episode. It'll still go up at the same time, though. I'll, I'll have it go up in the regular scheduled slot, so it's not... Because there's, there's no need to... Like, it's not like it's new episodes we're talking about, so there's no need to... You're not benefiting anything, yeah. so let's just keep it consistent. Yeah. Uh, which means it'll be New Year's morning, lately, uh, by the time it's up. But... Uh, yeah, so, so we should we should have an episode next week. That That, that, is, that is planned. Yes, uh, and... Uh... Merry Bebo Day to you all. <laughs> you do not look impressed. Uh, well, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I think, I'm not going to lie. I, th- I I thought for a second there was going to be a Star Wars reference and I was getting ready to be annoyed and then you... Then it was, then it was Bebo. It was re- relevant to the content of this this podcast. It was, it was. And I've, I've found the, the, the Legends community has really latched onto it. Like, really. Of course, of course they have. I mean... Yeah. 
It makes complete sense. Ah, uh, dear. Uh, so <laughs> that that is uh, that is uh, this week's TV from the multiverse. Uh, so, of course, let us know what you think of any of these episodes. Uh, sh- should you have seen them, and and the the old comments. Uh, we'll be back next week with the episode threes of the live action shows and episodes five and six of Young Justice. And uh, yeah, so we don't have too long actually. We, we're going to get maybe another couple of weeks of these before another the three, including inclu- next week and then two more, I believe. Is it two more? Maybe it should be one more after next week. I think I think it's two more because I think I think they start back on like the week of like the fifteenth, right? They do, yeah. So I got this week. And then we'd have one on the seventh, and then the fourteenth, and then it then the show start up on the fifteenth. So yeah, so right. three more from from now. So we may actually squeeze in Fat Amy Adams if it's episode six. Yeah, five. You mean five? Yeah. What? We've done two. There's three yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, five. If it's five, yeah. Look, it's 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 late. Ish. Jesus, Jesus. All right, so that that has been this week's episode. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Uh, get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz or DC Comics Podcast. Actually, more specifically, if you want to stick to DC specifically, um, uh, you can get us on Patreon dot com slash mailfuzz TV if you want to support us, support the show, support the channel. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description as well. Some other important links. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again uh, for for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching DC TV or other TV because uh, Agents of Shield really good. I mean, I know it's not DC, but I, I recommend it. You should be watching. So uh, that, that's that's us guys. So thank you very much for for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. And always remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better.